What's up YouTube? Georgia Silver Hunter back and today we'll be hunting our weekly thousand dollars worth of half dollars from Brinks. Now I did pick these up from my normal fifth third bank like I do just about every week and uh, I'm excited to get into them. I'm a little put off by all the super shiny ones. Uh, we've got a couple there definitely going to be a lot of 2021s but you know what that doesn't mean there can't be good stuff in the middle of the rolls. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into these. I hope you guys are excited. Let's hopefully find some silver. So like we do in every video, we're going to open up maybe the first 10 rolls together here on camera while I tell you guys what we're doing here if you happen to be new to the channel. Uh, and what we're going to do with these first 10 rolls is simply just edge hunt, uh, at least during this part. Edge hunting means just looking at the edges, looking for something silvery. Now, you may notice we've got a lot of really, really super shiny edges in there. And those are all going to be almost uh, exclusively 2021 Philadelphias. We might see some 2022s or 2023s sneak in there. But lately, when I see them this shiny, they're 2021 Phillies. Uh, we don't care so much about those. Those are no longer considered uh, not intended for circulation coins. Um... And even if they were, they don't hold too much value. Uh, if you don't know what a not intended for circulation coin is, or an NIFC, which we like to call it, it is a coin that the Mint produced specifically for collectors, really, right? Um, they're meant to go out to coin shops and collectors. They weren't meant to be released into circulation or to the banks to be used for regular money. Um, but the reality is a lot of these made their way into circulation. And 21 was part of COVID. They overproduced the 2021, and there was a coin shortage, and uh, a lot of these half dollars made their way out into the public. So anyway, our other NIFCs, if you're curious, they are all listed out in a, in a document that I have in the description down below this video that is free to download. But uh, they are 1970, which is also 40% silver, because that was only made in silver mint sets. 1987, which was only made in mint sets, uh, and then 2002 to 2020. So those are our NIFCs. We're also looking for San Francisco proofs. They'll have a deep mirror finish with uh, frosted details. And of course, we are looking for silver. That's going to be 1965 to 1970. That's your 40% silver, worth about $3.30 a piece. And then 1964 and earlier is going to be your 90% silver uh, worth, I want to say right now, somewhere in the $8 to $9 range in silver melt. Um, obviously, they can be worth more if they're numismatic or in really good condition. And premiums today put them higher than that anyway. So we got two rolls left that we're going to do here on camera. We're also looking for a handful of mint errors like the 1971D double die obverse, the 1972... 82 and 83, it's really the 72D, uh, 82P and 83P, they have a no FG. Uh, there's a couple other double dies we're looking for, like the 72 and the 80. Uh, I'm trying to think, what is the other one? 73D, there we go, it just came to me. So they're also listed in the document down below, and uh, I will, if I happen to find one of those, we'll bring in, show it to you under the scope, and uh, we'll talk about the value on that thing if we happen to find one. So with that, I'm going to go back through these. You can see we got lots of 2021s in here, so this should go pretty fast. But uh, hopefully we get lucky and find some silver, some errors along the way. Well, we're getting through rule number three here, and I did just want to bring you in here real quick. We've got our first NIFC of the hunt. We've got ourselves a 2020 Denver. Not in terrible shape, but definitely circulated. And right on cue, I open up rule number 11 without filming it. And you can see, like, the paper's still intact here. It's even a terrible pull. Look right there. That is just worn, silvery looking. There's not even edges left on it. What in the world is that going to be? And as you can tell, I suck at doing this one hand. Oh, it looks like we got a double. There's another one in there. Let's check this one out first. Okay, it's a really old Walking Liberty that's just been beat all to hell. We've got 
That looks like a 1934 to me. Let's look at it under the scope here. If I can get the... Where'd you go? I'm not sure this is... Oh, there it is. There's definitely the three and the four. So we've got ourselves a 1934. And is there a mint mark? There is. It's a 34 Denver Walking Liberty. Now, that's going to have a lot of silver loss on it just due to how badly worn it is. But still, it's a Walking Liberty <laughs> in a bank-circulated roll. Let's check out what else we got. We got ourselves a 1968 Denver in much, much better shape, of course. So now we got a 90, we got a 40. The rest of this hunt almost doesn't matter because we are on the silver. Let's hope there's more in the rest of these rolls. All right, well, that was a quick run to the end of box number one, but that's okay because we found silver early in the box, which always makes that box well worth it. We did find some NIFCs along the way that I didn't bring you in for. We had a couple of 2003 Phillies. We got a 2011 Philly and I think a PND. Now it was a couple of 2020 Philadelphias for NIFCs. Most of those will go back. Actually, all those will go back because I've already completed several books and I've got a couple of NI fully, you know, uh, filled NIFC books for sale on my store. And I don't need those right now, so they go back. Um, as for our silver, the 1968D is always a pleasant uh, addition to our silver chest, our treasure chest. And this 1934D apparently is one of the lower mintage um, uh, Walking Liberty half dollars. And this one is in terrible, terrible shape, so it doesn't really matter too much. But uh, the mintage on this guy is like a little over 2.8 million, if I recall correctly. Um, so pretty cool, even though it is worn and beat up. It's also going to be a nice addition to the silver treasure chest. So with that, let's go ahead and get into box number two. Okay, so like box number one, I do want to get into the first 10 rolls together just so we can get a feel for what we're looking at in this box. And uh, I also want to see you guys want to want you guys to see me open rolls live just in case we do come across some silver or something interesting. So let's see, that's roll number one. It looks like we're having a repeat of a lot of 2021 Philadelphia's which makes sense. These were picked up at the same time from the same bank, so they probably came from the same sort of load and rewrap of these half dollars. This is roll number three. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we're, we're averaging, I would say, somewhere between three and seven 2021s per box. So it's been uh, kind of a fast hunt because there is so much of the roll that I don't really need to spend much time looking at. So bicentennial, bicentennial. And we've also had a lot of bicentennials, now that I say that out loud. Uh, so let's see here, roll number five. I do hope we find some more silver in this box because it makes them so much more interesting. Here's roll number six. Oh, look at that. I just said it. I wished it, into, wished it into existence. Right there. We've got a nice edge there. I don't know if that's going to be new or old. That Walking Liberty was pretty easy to tell that it was going to be old because it was literally worn to the nub. We've got a 90% 1964. So we got another 90% in box number two to match our 90% in box number one. Let's give that a quick look for like the triple die. I don't see it. So we'll take it. Hopefully that's, uh, I can't tell if that's uh, focusing for you, but anyway, nice 1964, 90% silver. Let's keep on going. Here's roll number seven. See, now I want to open these rolls a little bit slower just to see if we can get surprised. Roll number eight. Nope. Lots of 2021s. There's roll number nine. Nothing special in there. And here is roll number 10. So, like I said in the. Oh, 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 wait. I was going to say, like I said in the first video, 
I'll bring you in when we find something, but we already found something. We've got some silver right here on the end. Looks like it was, actually it was an ender. I didn't, I didn't check for ender, so look at that, who knew? We don't have a Denver mint mark. It's tough to tell, that could be a 40 just by the edge. Let's take a look. Who knew? All right, so I'm real excited for this box right now knowing we had an ender. And it's a 1967. Sorry, my camera doesn't seem to want to focus all of a sudden. But anyway, hopefully you guys could see that all right. So, like box one, in the first 10 rolls, we've got... Well, actually, I think we were on roll 11 last time, but first 10 rolls, we got a 90 and a 40. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to get through these, see if we can find some errors, and then I'm going to get back to, these, uh, to the rest of the box, and I'll bring you in at our next find. All right, well, we got rolls 11 through 20 open, and I've got 11 through 19 here in front of me. We did get a couple of NIFCs in rolls 6 through 10, and uh, this one is open more than I like to get open before I bring you in. But when I first got the paper pulled back, I thought it was just going to be something gold-plated, and the more I ripped, the more I was like, I'm not sure what that is. So just in case it's silver, I haven't looked at it yet. Let's see what we got here. Oh, wow. That fooled me big time. I thought for sure that was going to be silver, but it looks like somebody's playing a good joke and they've painted it to look like silver. So false alarm, everybody, but uh, even those of us that have been doing this for several years get fooled. So pretty interesting, but nothing important. Just a 1981. All right, bringing you back in. On second look, I see why I missed this one. I didn't notice it because it was so dark. But this one is counter stamped with 1960 to 1985. And if I recall, these were kind of gold plated or gold leafed and sold as souvenirs way back in the day. I covered these in a previous video, but it looks like all of the gold has either been cleaned off or worn off or tarnished off or something. But you can see a little bit more of it here on the reverse. And that's why that edge fooled us. So anyway, I'm going to put it actually on the board as a miscellaneous. We've got rolls 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and you can see up here, I just got roll 26 out. Just got the paper starting to pull, uh, starting to pull off here. And we've got a super, super thick, shiny edge there. That's gotta be a 90 percenter. Let's take a look at it together here. 1964, it is a 90 percenter. Do we have a mint mark? We do not, so it is a Philly. And again, let's check it, make sure we don't have that DDO or DD or triple die on it. I don't think so. You see a little bit of ghosting, but I think that's, I think that is just the light I've got on it. I'll double check it off camera, but uh, we've got ourselves another 90% piece of silver. Two on the box, one, 140. Okay, we're all the way up here on roll 39. So 36, 7, 8, here's 9. And I stopped short of pulling the paper off because we've got another super shiny edge in there. I'm hoping it's not one of those faked like gold leafed coins. This time though, it does look like 90% silver. Just looking at the, the edging on it and how solid gray it is. Let's see. We have a D on the back right here. So we know we've got a 1964 Denver, 90% silver. Let's check for that repunched mint mark. Don't see it. And I don't know if this has a DDO or a TDO. So we're going to check that as well. Not seeing anything there, but that's going to be our third 90% on the box and fourth on the hunt. That's awesome. So I just got into roll number 42 and uh, I had it out of the paper and I thought for sure this coin right here was going to be a silver and it wasn't. And so I stopped filming and I thought I'm an idiot because I've been doing this forever and I just got fooled by a 1997. And I picked the roll back up and realized I totally did miss a silver in that roll. Hopefully you can see it right there. We've got ourselves another 40 percenter. You can just tell by the edge a 1968 Denver. So that's now a 67 and a 68 on the box. Well, we are at the end of box number two, and honestly, it was better than box number one and overall a great $1,000 hunt. We got a lot of silver in these two, or at least a lot for these days, and especially when you get 90%, 
you can't be too unhappy about it. So let's go through what we found. We had three 1964s. One of them was a Denver. We had a 1967 and a 1968. Uh, I didn't bring you in for any of the NIFCs except maybe in the first box. And that was simply because once I start finding silver, these are less interesting because there's just not a lot of value there. You might find somebody that'll give you a dollar for them or maybe up to $2 for them uh, if they're collecting uh, them for a series or something. But in general, if you're going to coin roll hunt, you're going to come across these things enough that they're not as exciting as silver. So anyway, we got three 2003s, a really cruddy beat up 2018, a 2019, and uh, we had this gold plated or used to be gold plated counter stamp 1981. I'll end up tossing that back into circulation because it's not that nice. And I actually have ones that still have the gold leafing or gold plating on it. So uh, that'll go back. If we want to go back to box number one, we did have that 1934D. You can hardly read it in such bad condition. We have another 1968, and then we had a smattering of other NIFCs, a couple 2003s, a 2011, and a couple of 2020 Philadelphias. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put coin apps up here on the screen uh, to give you an exact silver melt value on the silver we found today. But I'm going to take a quick guess without looking at coin apps. Uh, let's call these $3.30 a piece. So we're going to call those three $10.00. Each one of these guys about 850 or so is what my guess is going to be. So 24, 25, 26 dollars up here. So what did I say? That's going to end up being about 36 dollars in silver if I had to guess based on today's spot price. But the coin app screen will go up just for you guys so you can see the actual melt value. And of course, we do have our handy dandy treasure chest that we're putting all of our silver finds in this year. So all of this stuff is going right in the treasure box. So we'll know how much we have at the end of the year and we might do a little contest to see who can figure out how much silver's actually in there. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I know I did anytime I hunt half dollars and find silver, I have an absolute blast. So if you like this video, make sure you share it with your friends. Make sure you click that like button down below. And while you're down there, go ahead and leave me a comment for, I forget the commenter, they were complaining about my nails from the last video and even halfway through this one. I went ahead and cut them because apparently that makes people a little weird. So I don't know, whatever. It's a nail clipper. I can do it. Um, with that, uh, I would like to say if you're new to the channel, make sure you do click on that subscribe button and then click that little bell so you get notified each and every time I do release uh, each video. And a uh, special shout out to my channel members. Thank you guys for supporting the channel each and every month. Really appreciate it. I'm going to get these all wrapped up. They're going to go back to the box tomorrow, which is Saturday. And hopefully I can pick up some more coins so I can hunt a little more over the weekend. So with that, you guys take care, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.